Welcome to season five of Own Your Divine Light show. I am your host, Yara Atlantica Miller, also known as Janet Miller. The theme of the show is the divine human rising, recovering our sacred truth. And this show is an exploration of the sacred truth, the secret truths that have been concealed from us. We are letting go of this old system that no longer works and has held us back from becoming the divine humans we are meant to be. Today, we are having the amazing galactic shaman, Marcella Velasco, who will, be who, who will be sharing her divine truth with us so that together we can achieve the divine human rising. Welcome, Marcella. Love having you here. Thank you Thanks so much. much for having me on your show. So I'm going to tell you a little more about Marcella. Is it Marcella or Marcella? Which way do you prefer? Marcella. 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 Okay, I keep switching it. So Marcella was born and raised in Cusco, Peru, a beautiful area that I've been privileged to go to. And she was also educated in the United States and lives in both Peru and Aspen, Colorado. Marcella is a galactic shaman and a metaphysician. She is a bridge between the worlds. She is an expert who helps to awaken the seed of the divine within each of us using cosmic energies. One of her many rules, one of her many rules on this planet is to educate people about the spiritual approach to contact in South America, Spain, Egypt, and other countries. She has dedicated her life to spiritual ET and UFO contacts, contacts made from her heart. Her primary essential contact is with light beings from the multiverse, and we're going to let her tell you who they are. And from these beings, she has learned how to work with and utilize these energies, how to contact them through the heart and travels the world to activate interdimensional portals of light, raise the frequency of the planet, expand consciousness, touch and open hearts. She is a galactic being fulfilling her mission, utilizing her light codes and spheres from that special planet, we're not going to say it until she's going to tell us about it, to realign energies and manifest the flower of life on earth, creating heaven on earth. Wow, Marcella, that is an amazing resume. I mean, <laughs> Thank you. wow. I mean, it must feel, when you hear that, doesn't that feel pretty amazing that that's you, that you've done all that? <laughs> well, it's very simple to me because it's my life. You know, right. but I, it, it sounds deep, but um, we just have to go through a lot of stuff to do things that we want or to fulfill our missions when we know what it is. And usually we don't even know. We're just guided to do it step by step. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, you, you had an awakening as a child. I mean, you had insights as a child that you knew something was different about you, but can you tell us a little bit about that? Because you have an amazing beginning and it's it's nice for people to hear how you became this amazing galactic shaman that you are. <laughs> Thank you. Well, since I was a little girl, um, I grew up looking at lights in the corner of my eyes. They were always blue lights. And I had all these beings sitting on my bed talking to me. I learned how to do automatic writing. That's the way I took tests at school. Uh, for me, that's what, that was like normal. I thought that everybody was doing the same. I thought everybody saw the same. And then when I was like around 14, I realized that people didn't see what I was looking at. And then I realized that there was something different and that I, I wanted to, to know what it was. So I read all the books that my dad had about ETs and spirituality and Buddhism and all kinds of things. And just trying to understand myself mm -hmm. to be a normal teenager and that's actually what I did so through the years I learned that I needed to find myself I thought that um if we talk about past lives there were a lot of pieces of myself in different lands mm. so I had a very deep connection with Tibet oh. so I ended up going to Tibet to to get those memories of the times when I lived there and I was a monk. And it was an intense trip crossing the Himalayas. I also went to Egypt when I was very young and I cried because every single thing was a memory and, and the energy was amazing. But I think above all, it was the people in Egypt. And until now, 
people think that I'm Egyptian. People talk to me in the rabbits. I don't understand nothing. <laughs> and sometimes I have to explain to them that I'm, I'm from South America, that I'm not Egyptian. Um, and I went to many different places all over the world to pick up those pieces of myself until I felt like I was almost complete, that uh, that could be the, the beginning of a long journey. Wow. So you really had to, like I've always understood in this lifetime for all of us that our soul is meant to collect all those aspects of us to create, a, bring us into that higher consciousness being we're meant to be. So you actually physically went and did that and just... Well, some, sometimes, you know, there are memories for everybody that believes in reincarnation. You're, it's like you're attracted to different things. Sometimes even your, your physical looks show mm -hmm. you that maybe you're attracted to different cultures. Sometimes people think that meditation would help. In my case, there are things, a lot of things that need to be done physically. And I needed to go to many different places to reconnect, not only with myself or who I was in a certain period of time, but with the land. Mm -hmm. And that's what I do until now. I travel a lot. I connect to the land. Uh, that's when you were talking about me and, and opening portals and activating yes. codes. And that's what I do. I just follow guidance. So because you connect to the land so much, do you feel... Are you here more to help the planet raise the consciousness or is it humanity or both? I mean, it's probably both. But. I think it's both because if we know that, that Gaia, you know, Mother Gaia, Patamama, it's a living entity and it keeps all yes. its memories intact. So if we connect with that, we're connected to the heart of the earth and connected to the heart of the universe. So it becomes one. We're in the middle of it. We're just that linking that bridge that connects different worlds. And that's sometimes when I talk or I go to different conferences, I always say, my conference today is called Connecting Worlds because I'm just like a messenger. I'm a link between worlds and, and that's what I do. And when I go to different lands, sometimes it's to open up portals that have been locked for different reasons, sometimes for security reasons in places that are very sacred. So the knowledge won't be given away to anybody but just for the people that really need it sometimes they need to be open up for humanity for the planet mm -hmm. sometimes i go to 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 put down different um light codes sometimes i'm just like a transmitter and i'm there to bring new light codes for the new timing mm -hmm. so you have a particular connection to one group of galactic beings could you tell us about that yeah, well, I started when I was very young, um, learning about or understanding better the ET world. And here in Peru, there's a group that it was created around 1974 that it's called Mission Rama. Mm -hmm. And the person that directs that group is called Sixto Paz, Mr. Sixto Paz. So I learned from them all the protocols for contact um, that would make the, I mean, sense to me. And through them, I started making contact with beings from the Milky Way, especially from beings from Jupiter and Venus, Alpha Centauri. And then after that, I started my contact with the inner world, the intraterrestrial world, then the Ascended Master. So I did it all until I was contacted by beings that I call them light beings, not because they're necessarily angels, but because of the frequency they move in, that it's basically light. So these beings come from a universe within the blue sun of Andromeda. Mm. And I started that in 2003. And I was giving a lot of lessons of how to learn to contact with them because of the frequency and vibration they use, the world they live in, how to start, it, how to start my contact with them, my physical contact, how to recognize their presence on how to teach people what I was taught, that basically everything is centered in the heart, in the connection with the heart, in the sound of silence, on how you stop your mind and start to listen to your heart. Um, and one of the keys that they always talk about is humbleness. When we go zero ego, and then you, you can learn, you can share, because there's no ego in it at all. Mm -hmm. 
That's so, that's so interesting because there's there's another gentleman that I've been learning some things through, and he says the same thing. He says ego is out of the picture, and he tested me. He tests with rods, and he tested my ego, and he said you you have like three percent, like uh, no zero, very little, very very little. He said, I said that's good. I've always tried to stay humble, and I know you are definitely humble. I can feel that in every ounce of your body. You you just the most, I can feel it just like a big heart from your energy. I just feel this heart centered energy from you. So beautiful, so peaceful, so loving, just, just such a gentleness from you. And you. so, so you connected with the Andromedans. Now, did you know that you had a life in Andromeda and were you part of their, their um, society at one point? Oh, I never, I was never connected with Andromeda. I never knew it existed. I never heard of it. Mm -hmm. It was just that because through Mission Rama, you know, you get to these groups and you meditate weekly and you go to do field work for mm -hmm. easy contact until one day I was channeling because I, I, I channel a lot. And this being introduced herself, you know, and that's when I said, oh, my God, her name is Ariana from Andromeda, from a blue sun in Andromeda. So that's when I started looking for Andromeda and the galaxy and the constellation of Andromeda and where the blue sun, which actually it's a portal into this universe where these beings come from. Mm -hmm. So when people ask me what's the dimension they move, I always say that there's no dimension because they're so high in frequency and in light that uh, they've been here on the, on our planet since the beginning of times. They have helped humanity since the beginning of times. They're back, they're here, and they're helping us. Nobody's not here to solve our problems, but at least to teach us what we can do to yeah. do better things for our planet, for humanity at these important times. It's I, I know a few people that have, have said that they're in drama then, and they're doing work, you know, from it. They, they know, they've found out that they're from Andromeda. And I had a dream, like, I don't know, about six months ago. And Andromeda came into the picture. And I, I didn't remember anything else about it. I just heard the word Andromeda as I was waking up. And I thought, I had never thought I had any connection with Andromeda. Now, I don't know if I really do. I just know that when I saw you and I heard you speak, I had to connect with you. It was like, oh. Who is this woman? And, I, and the connection that she has and the way she's bringing through these amazing light beings. I mean, it was just so beautiful, your energy. I said, you, you ha people have to know who you are. You have, they have to hear your message, you know? It was so important for you to share, for me to hear, hear you share your message on here. And um, I'm just feeling so blessed that you came on. And so... You know, Andromeda, Andromeda, it's, I mean, the, the nearest galaxy to the Milky Way, mm -hmm. but it's like two point and a half uh, light, million light years from the Earth. Eventually, supposedly, scientifically, it will collide with the Earth and then the Milky Way will be part of it. A lot of people connect with the Andromeda energy. There are beings and from different places in Andromeda. You know, it's a galaxy with thousands and thousands of stars and mm -hmm. planets and constellations and all that. I don't relate to any of that. I talk about the universe that is within the, the blue sun of Andromeda, which is the central sun mm -hmm. of Andromeda. Wow. Yeah. And, you know, they talk about there's a central sun and then there's different suns. So the blue sun of Andromeda, would you call that like a central sun? Yeah, it's the central sun of Andromeda. And you and go Andromeda. through that as a portal. They cross mm -hmm. that as a portal to go into this universe. And sometimes when I talk about, you know, energy that is coming from the blue sun of Andromeda, it's because we're trying to align different suns in different um, constellations, galaxies, until we get to our sun, so that energy can come through. And sometimes oh, it's wow. blue. So, so if you ever see my pictures or something, because uh, I do, I take a lot of pictures, and it's only for me to reconfirm what I'm doing or what I'm looking at. Usually, they use a lot of blue energy, and it's a very high frequency blue energy. Mm -hmm. Yes, I've seen some of your pictures. They're pretty amazing. 
I, I, you know, so if I can tell people where, where can we find your pictures? Is it on um, your oh, Facebook? They're, they're on my Facebook. I'm not, yeah. um, I'm not a public person. I'm just opening up a little bit. And, right, right. And I'm learning. I'm learning to do that too. Sure, uh, to to sure. be public a little by little. But um, I post my pictures or when I'm traveling, what I'm doing at the moment. Uh, so people can see and can feel the energy and see that there's much more to ET content than we think. Sometimes um, the way people think about ET content is more about the phenomena. And basically the phenomena, it's part of it. But mm -hmm. there's a point where it becomes obsolete because the way beings manifest are amazing. We just have to learn the little details. For example, for me, sometimes there's an Andromeda being in front of me. And if you ask me, people are going to think, oh my God, maybe it's 10 feet high, tall. And actually they're so tiny because they can get in miniature size. So I can realize that actually, yeah, they're in front of me. So there's so many things that we learn little by little about contact. And that, I think that happens with beings from many different places that they're teaching people how to recognize them, how to see them. So. When we talk about uh, physical contact, that it's something that it's so common when people ask you, oh, did you have physical contact? Did you see them? Actually, it doesn't really matter mm -hmm. because the contact is continuous. It, once it's connected from the heart, it's there. And if you want them to be visible, they will become visible, but it's up to us to learn how to see through and beyond mm -hmm. so we don't see with the physical eyes we see with the heart we feel we hear and um i think it goes beyond everything that we know but we learn day by day sure you know i've i've seen some things i've never seen in et per se that i can think of although something showed up early in 2000 in my just showed up on my floor and it was looked like a little being and i was like I don't know what that is, but I'm not ready for it. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, I don't know who you are because it didn't look like a, it was, it was upright. It was tiny. And I, I didn't know what it was, but I said, I think you need to leave because I'm just not ready. <laughs> so it left. I haven't seen it since, but um, that was the only per real contact I can think of as a physical, actual being right in front of me. But um I did see, I've seen, you know, the orbs of fairies and lots of that kind of thing, which is beautiful and just, just wondrous in itself. And that's, you know, when I was really joyful graduating from my healing school, I was surrounded by all these tiny orbs. And I thought, what is that? And then I realized it was the fairies. I said, this is incredible. This is so gorgeous. And I, I, I just felt I was so joyful that they just came and greeted me. And I said, this is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. So I've seen some things that way. But um, well, it's I, I call these Andromeda beings light beings because mm -hmm. usually they're just full of light. They're just energy. So sometimes I said blue beings, golden beings, transparent uh -huh. beings. Uh -huh. And they use different types of energy too. And um, either they're in front of me, I see the beams, I see the flashes, uh, depending on where I am. So I learned that, um, that sometimes contact doesn't have to be done outside looking at stars, doing field work. It, it can happen in your bed, it can happen anywhere. When they it's want to talk to you and they want to manifest, they, they will do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because at the end, we don't choose them. Right? Yes, they the ones decide. That, that find their families on earth or they choose you for different reasons. Like you, you're a communicator and you're doing a fantastic work. So it's basically them contacting us mm -hmm. and teaching us different things. And sometimes, you know, we'll just become messengers because it's not about any of us. It's not about me. It's not even about my name, you know, it's, right. it's, it's about what we're doing. We're just messengers giving away a message of light. And that's what is required at this time. Mm -hmm. So when you do these portals, like I've heard of things called cities of light that are being created on the planet. Is Do you, do you believe that that's happening? And are you part of that kind of help in creating cities of light? Is that part of what, what you might be doing? Uh, no, 
I believe it happens, yes, like in Shasta, and there are many places in South America mm -hmm. and Europe and in Africa. But I don't I don't do that. What what I do is um when I go to certain places and I feel that, for example, the energy is now moving and it should be moving like a portal, like an axe of light to hold the, the, the planet. It mm -hmm. is activated. I just become one with that and expand it. So it can go from the heart of the earth to the heart of the universe and become like a pillar of light that is going to hold the light together and the, hold the earth together. And then that's when I open or activate a portal. When I'm bringing light or light codes to the earth, I do similar things, but I use my hands a lot because it's through my hands that these codes have shapes mm -hmm. and, and forms that either are coming down to the earth or they're coming to the people or they're coming to a certain place on earth and then it expands from there all over the place. And um, it just depends how much energy I can hold to, mm -hmm. to do that. Uh, many, many years ago, I used to, to do a lot of work in Spain. And I remember at the beginning, I was so tired, so exhausted that I, I would eat so much sugar and chocolates all day just to recover <laughs> because I was learning to, you know, and then sure. I lost a lot of hair and eyebrows and eyelashes. Really? And wow. Then, then with time, I learned that how easily it is, you know, to take it through my body. I move it in my hands and and then that's everything you just learn with, with time and experience. Mm -hmm. Yes, chocolate was always a great grounding device, right? Is it which for grounding? Yes. 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 I remember doing that in groups that I've been in. We I always brought the dark chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> always. So that, that's so exciting. So basically what I'm hearing you say is that you're an anchor, like you anchor that light into the planet so that it'll stay. So yeah, you so are, that's, like you well, said, that's one of the, that's one of the things that I do. Yes. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. That is definitely one of the things you do. Yes. Because we need that right now. Cause I know that some of us aren't really at the frequency level yet for that, but your frequency is allowing that to happen. So you can as you said, you're like the portal of the conduit. It comes through you. And, you know, I guess it needs somebody on earth that is of the highest frequency to bring it through to ground it into the planet. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I said before, that sometimes it's very important that we do things physically. Because sometimes right. we do it right. in meditations and, and we can do many things in the subtle world. But mm -hmm. sometimes it's requested that we go to a specific place and be there physically. And that's what I do. I follow guidance. Um, I believe every time that I have to go to one place, uh, the universe and my Andromeda family will take care of me and will take me mm -hmm. to the place that it's needed and, and put me on the right place to do everything that is requested for me to do at the moment. Sure. Yeah, that makes so much sense that you have to be there physically. Now I understand what you, why you have because I've done some traveling myself and and has helped sh you know clear energies off of the planet that are you know are were in the way before we could anchor this light on. I think there was a lot of clearing being done. Did you do some of that as well? Yeah, I did. I did with groups of people sometimes when I was younger yeah. traveling with yeah. groups of people. That was and the initial it's always work. Very good and it's always helpful. Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, you hear so many different um, predictions flying around in the world, like what's going to happen, this is going to happen, that's going to happen. And I'm not even going to name any of them because there's, who knows if any of it's true. So what do you see happening since this whole pandemic has been around? What, how do you see us, how have you seen the humanity shifting and the planet shifting since all of that has happened and, and where we are now? Well, I think a lot of people are waking up and mm -hmm. I think that's very important, the awakening. Now, yeah. So whatever their awakening for a little of consciousness, I think that is very important. And I think, you know, the, the pandemic and everything that happened in every country, like in Peru, you know, a lot of people were dying because there was no oxygen, simple as that, you know? Right. So that is uh, changing so much because, um, People need to learn that we as a whole, you know, humanity as one, we need to work together with the same purpose. And it's not easy. It's not going to be easy. 
Mm-hmm. It's going to take a lot of time, maybe. But I think a lot of people are working towards it. And I think that is very important that uh, we can understand that um, beyond our regular 3D world, there's more, there's more to come. Mm-hmm. That um, consciousness is one of one part of that. Same as the spirituality, whatever ways people find that will give them peace, and will make them connect to themselves. I think that's that's the beginning of everything, the connection. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The going inside, the the self kind of self exploration, like looking at yourself. And you know, we talk about the shadow work. Do you feel that's valuable that people do that? Well, sometimes it is. You know, whatever ways people can find to recognize themselves. Also, even to like like here in Peru, there's a lot of people that come here to to do ayahuasca, mm-hmm. um, and they do for ayahuasca retreats and everything. And ayahuasca basically is used to make people see their demons, mm. to face their fears, to find themselves. And if that's a way of healing, then it's fine, as long as people can recognize that there's a lot of sides of each of us that need to be mm. recognized. And then clear and understand. Then, then we're fine. I think we're going forward. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I mean, I think we have to look at all sides of us because, you know, then how do you find peace? It almost like that that brings sort of a peacefulness in yourself when you finally see all the parts of you. Maybe not always perfect, but you kind of accept them, and you can shift them, of course, to make them a little easier on you, and also to um, just make yourself, I, I, I found so much inner peace from doing my own shadow work and my own inner work that I, I, I want people to do it because I feel that they get so much from it. Like you're saying, it's so important to share that and to, you know, be willing to look at yourself. And that's part where the humbleness comes in that you shared, you know, to be, you asking for humbleness is almost like, help me see this in a humble way so that I can handle it. Like some people don't want to look at those parts because they're afraid to see it. They're going to be so upset with themselves. And I don't know. I think, I mean, I know it wasn't easy to see my own in the beginning, but yet once you see it, it's so freeing. I think it's like a freedom comes. You think? It is. Um, you were talking about humbleness and uh, you don't get uh, to learn to be humble unless you don't have any ego. The problem that we have is the ego and the mind. And sometimes the mind plays a lot of tricks with the ego, <laughs> you know? And so it will work on that because um, the ego is just like an illusion. You know, it's even like our knees. It's like, that's not going to take us anywhere. You know, it's mostly what we're doing, uh, what we came here to do. If we can understand what the missions or what you think that will make you happy to make others happy if you're going to be in the position of a teacher or or sharing experiences and all that. Um, it has to do with uh, with the mind and, and the ego, as I said before, you know. Uh, it's not easy to have zero ego, but there's a point when you realize that nothing is about you. It's more about the, the spiritual being inside you, the life being that you are, more than the physical 3D being that you are the person. Yeah, and I remember hearing you talk about in one of your interviews that you had to go through 33 steps when you became, you had to be, what did you have to do, clear things? How did that work for you? What did you have to do? Well, um, when I started my contact with Andromeda, they say we had to go through 33 steps Mm -hmm. to achieve like a galactic consciousness, like a galactic Christ consciousness to be on a different frequency and a different level. And I thought I was going to get a list, you know, it's like, okay, 33 <laughs> things, you just follow the list. And it didn't work that way because I didn't know that uh, each point of those 33, there were things that I was living every single day in my life. Sometimes mm-hmm. there, there were repetitions, you know, like humbleness, like the ego, like trust, yes. like being honest, like yeah. learning um to see through and beyond without even thinking that it's not true when actually, yes, it's happening in the multi-dimension. And it's really true. I have to believe it's true. Uh, 
unconditional mm -hmm. love, um, giving and receiving, um, teaching others how to be better. Uh, they were very simple things, no lying, not even lie to yourself or believing in your own lies that your mind created. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There were so many things. So <laughs> many times I was like, would this be, you know, number one, number two, number three? Then I made a list of 33 points and I repeated many of those many times until I understood, oh yeah, that's point whatever number, you know, until I got to the 33 and I said, well, you know, I think that maybe we're ready. And in my group, when we became this, we were only three people. Wow. And a driver. So when we were ready, uh, each of us in different ways, because I was in the U.S., my other friend was in Lima, and the other one was here in Cusco. Mm -hmm. Once we were all ready, um, we were invited to go to a place where that's my contact place here in Peru. That's where all the Andromeda contact began or we confirmed at that time. So once we were there, then we knew that that's a physical contact when you're ready, you know, when you're lifted into atoms and you just explode in the light to go into the world. And you wow. know that you just exploded in light and you just take it up. Nothing happened. You know, we came back into our bodies and it was like, okay, let's go. My father's waiting for us at the farm. Oh and those, those little things that um, you understand that they happen. It's not a big deal. It's going to happen always. Uh, you're going to talk about it. You're going to teach people. Um, but it's not like this huge thing when you're going to talk about UFO contact. I mean, you saw a ship, you saw these beings, you saw the galactic Christ. Uh, because it's just an experience that it's so individually taken that uh, it will change your life forever. But um, it's it's not to write a book about it. You, I can talk about it. I can, you know, when I go to these conferences, I show my pictures of that night. You know, when we were taken into this place in Andromeda and everything that happened to us, that was amazing. But we took it at something so simple, so easy, and with so much humbleness of being so blessed or mm -hmm. being able to live through that experience. Well, I don't think everyone would agree with you on not something to write a book about, Marcella. <laughs> <laughs> There's some unique experiences. So when you had your first contact with the Andromedans, you kind of just burst into atoms of light. Is that what she said? Yeah, the thing is that we were going to a lagoon that is like over 10,000 feet high. Uh, okay. Here in Peru, even though it's so high, it doesn't snow. And it I doesn't didn't go, no because we're so close to the equator. So oh, sure, sure. Even though it's cold, but we don't mm -hmm. have snow. So uh, for somebody like me that, that lives in Colorado, I mean, I'm used to the storms and the and yeah. snow. So once we got to this lagoon, it was snowing like crazy, but we could see that the, the snowflakes had shapes. They were wow. all codes. It was all a, a written language. Oh. And then suddenly this tube of light that it was like being in a cosmos. It was like a movie, you know, this huge tube of light oh. came around that we could see that it was in them. It was light. We were uh, standing at, uh, at the edge of this lagoon and we were lifted, lifted. At least two of us lifted. And we always said, you know, my friend Lolo and I was like, okay, when we are, we're going to be lifted, remember, remember your name on earth, remember where we're going from to where, you know, just as a joke. And we were lifted and everything we saw, you know, and then our cameras at that point, most of them didn't work. We only had one left that allowed us at the end to take pictures of the ships and everything that happened there. And, um, and I remember, you know, once I was lifted, I just exploded into consciousness. And I think that's what contact is about. I mean, just a consciousness of being light because we're yes. part of the same and being with the, with the mind, remembering everything that we saw, but basically an experience in consciousness. So when we came back into our bodies, it was like, okay, let's go. <laughs> Nothing happened. We'll talk about it later. It sounds like you became one with the universe when you say we. Yeah, that, that's what it was because you just explode into pieces. I think sometimes um, Alex Collier talks about it too how you explode into atoms of light because that's where we are. So that consciousness at the moment 
it becomes part of that whole universal energy and light. And if you are conscious also in your mind to see mm -hmm. and not being afraid of nothing, but just being able to see what's going on, relate to it, and just integrate everything into your heart, then it's all based on energy. Yeah, I mean, you basically achieved oneness. You achieved what everyone talks about, which is called oneness. You yes. really physically achieved the oneness. And that's pretty miraculous. I mean, it's, it's, I know you say it's simple and we all can probably do it. But the fact that you got to experience it and you're sharing that and you're saying everyone can do it. It's simple, but it takes a little work. <laughs> Uh, well, it, it, it's simple the way it happens because you're not okay. doing any of that. You know, they just tell you sure. a place, a time, and a date, and you go and you don't expect nothing because that's, I think that's the base of everything. No expectations of yes. nothing. Yes. Because if you start thinking, oh, this is um, this is an ET concert, I'm going to see a ship, a metallic, you know, craft with thousands of lights. Uh -huh. well, that's not going to happen. So, because um, expectations sometimes are destroyed, what's going to happen? Mm. You just go with zero expectations. True. Basically, with the experience in the heart to see what happens. And mm. that's what it happened to us, I mean, many times, many, many times. Wow. So, did you ever actually go on an Andromedan ship? Is there such a thing as an Andromedan ship? Yeah, well, there are many. There, there are many ships that are like motherships. They're huge. They're located sometimes above the earth in different places. Sometimes they have ships that are in the middle halfway from the earth mm -hmm. or the Milky Way into the Andromeda galaxy. They're right. located in different places. I mean, I, I gave them different names for different reasons. Sure. And, and yeah, uh, I learned how to move into those dimensions, the multidimensionality. Mm -hmm. Learn how to be present in one and the other. Even during the COVID times, you know, we work so hard with the ships that are overproved to help a lot of people. Um, so we learn, I think we spent many, many years uh, learning, even astronomy that we didn't know nothing inside those ships. Oh, and sure. And, and different things, the use of different energies for healing too. So you were actually on the ships too as well. Yeah, be, uh, we've, been, we've been, I mean, these two friends and me, three of us being trained in the Andromeda ships for different things, yes. If so you, you got to me for a moment, I'm going to turn on the light. Oh, sure. Yes, it got a little dark. dark. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. I was thinking it got dark. I'm like, wow, it got dark there. <laughs> no, because it was it was very sunny. It was very clear when we started, and then I got right. It. I'm sorry. Okay. No, it's fine. It's fine. That's so interesting. So you actually have been on the ships, and you were working. Now the beings are light beings. You said so. You don't see any physical, actual form. Do you just see like frequencies of light? Uh, well, no. Actually, I see I see forms because they're very you? Cool, and I can see eyes. Okay. You know, and, and I can see uh, physical features, but the thing with these light beings is they can take the shape, shape of whatever they want you uh -huh. to see or okay. whatever you want them to look like. And um, they can just... Um, they create what you choose. Shift, yeah. Okay. Okay. And they talk through telepathy. I, I know that's what everyone... Yeah, they're completely telepathic. Yeah. Um, and then um, it's also a hard language and um, sometimes it's a written language, you know, sometimes they write in different languages uh, on the water. When um, I go oh, to Egypt, okay. they write on, on, the, on the waters of the Nile. Sometimes they write really? in the sky when they need to call my attention. So uh, I look at it and I always ask permission, you know, to take photos so I can remember what they were trying to say when or what I, I need to go to do or where I have to go at that moment. So there are many ways that they use to communicate. So that's like a, like a lie language. Yes, because I know once that happened to me that I saw light language on the water. I was standing at a, just at a little creek, which is right nearby here where I live. And I was with a friend, we were both fresh out of healing school. And we went to this restaurant for lunch and then we walked over it. It was an old, it's an old brook, but it has an Indian wind, you know, water, water wheel. It's ancient and it's been left in place. 
it's still there. And we watched the water and all of a sudden the two of us started seeing lights, light language, symbols flashing, flashing, flashing on the water. We both went, it, we were just transfixed. We couldn't move. And it happened, for, you know, three minutes, four minutes. It was just, and we just said, did you see that? It was just so incredible. I had well, never seen Sometimes that. those life codes are for the earth, you know, and you can see them um, on the water. Okay. Either because they're being sent at that moment or because they were written and left in the past. And sometimes uh -huh. the way it was written, sometimes for a tiny bit and a reason, they become visible. That was so unusual. I'd never seen it before. We weren't sure if it was for us or for who, but it was it was definitely a life changing experience. We both well, were prob very probably good. probably was for you that it's there, you know, because mm -hmm. not everybody sees it. It could be there, and you could be with a lot of people, and people won't see it. They won't realize that anything is there. So basically, it was for you probably. My friend saw it too. We both saw them and it was just incredible. It was nice to have the validation that we both saw it. And it was just, it was in like around 2002 or three. It well, was around then. Yeah. That was a wonderful gift then. It was a wonderful gift. And we, we just, we felt very blessed. And we just, we said, we said, thank you. <laughs> because we just knew this was very special, very profound. But um, yeah, it's amazing how the communication is everywhere, as you say, to be humble and just to trust and believe like that was part of your learning to let go of the ego was to believe and to trust in what you were seeing, that it's simpler than we think. And it's, it's, it's profound in its own way, in its simplicity, I guess you could say, profound in its simplicity, what you, sh what you saw, like the things you've seen are just pretty incredible but you see them as simply beautiful things happening and that they're all heart-centered and that is where we're all moving to that energy or hoping to move to that and you know connecting with that which is where we create that new heaven on earth correct yeah so you know, I feel like we've just, you've just shared some beautiful experiences. Anything else you feel that you want to share with us that you think is important for the audience to know? Well, I think it's, it's very important that uh, we learn first to connect to ourselves. That's what I was saying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not important the way you, 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 you use to do that. It, it, it can be meditations. It can be um, places. It, it can be ways mm -hmm. of of just being uh, in silence and close your eyes, whatever you use as a tool, the important thing is that you just connect to yourself first. And once you connect, because that is gonna give you a lot of grounding and that's gonna give you a lot of integrity with yourself, then you can go outside you know, and connect. And, and if people resonate with different uh, families, galactic families in different mm -hmm. uh, Mm -hmm. constellations or planets whatever then it's fine you know they they should they should go deep into that because the thing with the et contact for me it's not that i see a ship today no you have to create a relationship you have to find out who you're being in contact with who are those beings what do they want from you what you want from them what can you learn if they start talking to you you want to see them well you have to ask how to be prepared if you want to see them because it, the basic of this is not to see them. <laughs> it's, it's to learn everything that they're trying to teach you. So it's it's about listening, you know, and it's not listening, looking all over the internet or what I can find. It's listening to, mm -hmm. to yourself. Mm -hmm. It's listening to your heart. Just go within as much as you can until you're completely stable. And then you, you go out and everybody's going to find uh, their own experience. And I think individual experiences are always valid you know people shouldn't look for anybody to tell them this is true or this is not true because it's always true for the person that experiences it mm -hmm. so thank you for that if you get a contact is there such a thing as a good contact and a not so good contact <laughs> I think there are different beings, like there are different levels, vibrations, and energy. Always be careful, you know, always protect yourself. There are many types of protections, you know, as simple as being protected in the circle of light, 
-hmm. you know, being inside a crystal, um, many different ways of meditations and um, and even the way you you invoke, you know, angels and masters, whatever, just make sure you're first protected. The land where you are is protected. Uh, because yes, there are many things like in anything, duality is still present for us in the 3D world. Mm -hmm. Cause there are lots of beings that can shape shift and they can take on different uh, forms. So. And, and, and besides the beings, they can be different energies also. So. And different energies. Yes, yes. Yeah, very interesting. I mean, it's incredible the, the work you've been doing. And do you have any plans to go somewhere next? What's your next, uh, any, uh, or do you, can you share it? What's your next calling? Well, I, as I told you, uh, my dad is sick. So oh, that's I, right. I'm yeah. in Peru right now, and I'm going to be here for a while. You're going to stay for now. Um, yes. That that and at the end of January, I felt the call to go to Easter Island. It was a place oh. where I've been to. But because it, even though it's it's in in Asia, like, basically, but it belongs to Chile. So mm -hmm. flying mm -hmm. from Peru to Chile is easier than going through LA or somewhere else. Sure. Uh, so it was it was very interesting because I didn't expect all the energy hidden there. Um, I knew that it was part of a, of a lost continent. I didn't know the energy was still there. Uh, mm -hmm. I had a very interesting um, experience there, bringing back all the energy of Mu, the lost continent of Mu uh -huh. for, the, for humanity and the planet to activate all those codes to activate the light because even even uh, physically uh, Easter Island it's it's in a very a special position between South America and the rest of the world and um, it's been used for different reasons for wars for anything mm -hmm. and I think it's important that it can be also a point of light that expand the light and the light codes that it was left from the ancient times. I found many places in Easter Island that are very similar to Peru to Machu Picchu Really? Um, the, to the outside of the Great Pyramid in Egypt. So if the construction at that time, those huge rocks were the same, so it means that everything was just one piece at the beginning of time. Oh, so so uh, that trip, it was for connecting and interconnecting the energies, like the flower of light that uh, interconnects everything. So that's what mm -hmm. I did. Wow. Yeah, that's fabulous. Because I've been to, I think, is it Saxahuaman, the fort in the woman, Earth, yeah. that has the big, big blocks. And then you, is it similar to those that you saw in Easter Island, something like yeah. that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly and then I've been the, to the, there are places where the rocks are huge, like in Egypt. Even mm -hmm. the shape of, of, of the stone is carved like it was Machu Picchu, a copy of Machu Picchu. Wow. And, and the way, the Moais are on the ground and the way they were made is it, very similar to, to the statues in Egypt. So it's like everything is interconnected in our planet. So the energy needs to be interconnected too. Mm. So you connected. So when you said Mu, you meant Lemuria. So that was well, the ancient site. Well, actually, I think um, sometimes I have a hard, a hard time with that because I think Lemuria was one thing. And the lost continent of Mu was another thing. Do you really? Oh, interesting. Yeah. And when um, the people in Easter Island talk about their their history, you know, they talk about these these beings, an ET being, and people that came from a lost continent that sunk. You know, and oh, it can so be Atlantis. It can be Lemuria. It, Atlantis is on the other side of the of the Atlantic, mm -hmm. but uh, this is in the Pacific. But at the beginning of times, there were no names. It was just one place that sure. started to be divided, you know, mm -hmm. with cataclysms and all that. And I thought it was very interesting. Uh, I, I've never been there before. So I thought it was a very interesting place to, um, mm -hmm. the light, to activate the light codes, to be able to also leave all kinds of uh, light codes for the people that go there because that island is so isolated it's lost in the middle of nowhere mm. and a lot of people go there but sometimes it's important that those people the tourists take that energy with them to where they live 
So we connect the energies in our planet to make it all together too. Mm, yes. Yes, it's so beautiful. I've not been to Easter Island, but I've been to Egypt and, and I've been to uh, Machu Picchu. And where else did you say was wonderful? There was one more place. Oh, well, you told me you went to Brazil. Yes, I did go to Brazil. And, uh, but I, I went to Iguazu Falls. I don't know if that matters, but I went to... Um, oh, all of that matters. It does. I mean, all those places, like we talked about, when you collect your soul aspects, we're mentioning earlier before we came on that you travel to all these places to collect the parts of you as well. When you were young, you were guided to do that. And so do you feel like you're still collecting or do, are you complete? Uh, probably, I mean, you never stop collecting. <laughs> okay. <laughs> for never sure is. Yep. Yep. Uh, you know, but for example, um, I was in Namibia last year and I love the Kalahari Desert, you know, the connection that I have with that desert, mm -hmm. it's amazing. And I don't think I lived there before, but at least it's a deep connection with, with, the, with the desert in, in Africa. And it was very interesting too. So sometimes I'm, I'm being taken to places, not only because I connect with, 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 with the land, but also because sometimes in those isolated places, the Andromeda ships can manifest physically. And I'm in the middle of nowhere. And, and yeah, that's where they are, you know, and sometimes that's where I get all my messages too. Mm, so special. I know when I went to Jordan, I felt very connected to it. I loved it. I liked it. You know, I went to Israel and Jordan, but I felt more connection to Jordan. And yeah, then I it, found it's out. a beautiful place. It's amazing. It is. And I, I ended up getting a past life, you know, reading where the whole life of Jordan opened up for me. And I had no idea I'd ever had life there. But when I got there and I was eating the food, it was like, oh, this is so wonderful. It felt so <laughs> fantastic. It was like nectar from the heavens. I said, oh, my goodness, this is so amazing, you know, and I hadn't felt that about my other trip part that I had visited. And it was just it's so interesting how you get these connections to the places that you're meant to, you know, collect your soul aspects in. And, you don't. and I think that's a way also that how we raise the frequency in the planet when we're mm -hmm. traveling, taking energy from one place to the other. Uh, if you're connected to one place, you raise your frequency at the same time. You're raising the, the frequency of the collective at the same time. And I think all of that is very important. I agree. I agree because I've even been to Vietnam and Cambodia and I just thought that was amazing. I loved it. Yeah. And, and so everywhere we go, we're bringing the energies and we're connecting it. Yeah. Yeah. That makes so much sense. It does. And you're doing it knowingly. And we're, and I was doing it somewhat knowingly, and, but not in the beginning. I know now, now I do. And I purposely did it after a while. But um, you have done it with a full mission that, you know, you understand your whole mission connected to that which is so powerful and so wonderful to know that it's a gift. It's a wonderful gift you have to know that this is your mission. I mean, it's probably not always the easiest, but it's your life you said, and this is what you know. And how do you feel about your life? Are you happy with it? Do you enjoy it? Oh, I feel at peace with it. Good. Okay. You know, I, I, I try to, to fulfill my mission. I listen. Oh, yeah. I go wherever I need to go. I complete my missions. And it's not being happy, but it's being fulfilled, mm -hmm. doing what you have to do. You know, you're responsible for doing that. I'm responsible for bringing light or activating portals or, or teaching people about contact or light beings. And I think I'm, I'm trying to do that, even though I'm not a public person, but I'm, I'm opening up little by little. Mm -hmm. Because as I told you, I think at the beginning, I, last time I talked to you, uh, English is not my mother tongue. I speak Spanish. So um, English is the language that I learn. Well, we appreciate it. We, we can't say we know a lot of language in the United States. <laughs> we need to know more. <laughs> when I lived in Brazil, I, I got to learn a little bit of Portuguese, but my husband spoke some Spanish. So they love that, the, the Brazilians, because he could share 
and and say simple things and they could communicate where a lot of the guys there was no communication there was no way they could connect because they didn't know any kind of language but he remembered his high school and you know grammar school spanish and he could put it together into you know simple sentences and and make a real language from it and they loved that they appreciated that he tried to connect you know so um oh i got off the topic i was going to ask you one more thing do you think spiritual maturity is an important thing is this what is this what you achieved when you kind of release your ego do you call that spiritual maturity would you put that kind of a word to it uh yes you can call it that because um you have to be mature for contact for everything because mm -hmm. it, it's not a job it's a responsibility you know yeah. if you do it just for the phenomena just because you're curious or because it's in fashion it doesn't it doesn't work that way you mm -hmm. know it's your responsibility to do it and do it right and I would also say that it's everything is based on respect and integrity. No. Yes, yes. Like you shared when you were looking into your own 33 steps, you had to kind of go through that. You had to look at what you believed in. You had to be honest. This has all got to do with integrity. Yeah, and it's it's a very interesting word, integrity. I remember someone saying, you're not in integrity. And I was like, what? That was a long time ago, you know, and I didn't for, understand. For, for me, it's, it's very hard to translate that word uh, from Spanish. Well, it's being in, in trust. Spanish, I like, would say, you know, tienes que ser integro. But mm -hmm. that's a word, uh, you, we don't have it in English. So I, I always say it's integrity, you know. Well, for me, it means sort of like building trust with other people because you, you fulfill what you say you're going to do. And yeah. you also um, follow through with what you promise. And you and, follow and, through and, and, and you're being honest, you're being honest with yourself. So you yes, follow your rules yourself. and you just straightforward and everything uh -huh. around yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's all part of what I would say is spiritual maturity. Yes. Because we won't be ready for contact, like you said, until we reach that level, which is what you you got to because you, you chose to go there. It's a choice. You don't have to do anything, correct? You can always just say no nope, i'm done i don't have to do this if yeah. i don't want to because yeah, it's free because, will <laughs> yeah because it, 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 it's a path that it's so unknown you know mm -hmm. sometimes when i mean in life sometimes you know what you're going to achieve you know what you want this is a very unknown path so you it just is. walk every day yes and, and you do it the right thing if you feel it's right yes it's that leap of faith that you took right you took the leap like they say, take that step off the cliff, that leap of faith, and then you never know what's going to happen. And yeah. once you do, that's the trust factor. It's all of it. And you did it. You did it. And it's so it's so inspiring, Marcella. And thank you so much for all that you've done. So any final words? Because we said that before, but if there's anything else you want to share? I mean, we went a bit more now, but it was wonderful what you shared. I mean, all that was no, true. I, I just want to say that we're all together in this. We're all one. We all need to work together. We all need to take care of our planet, Mother Gaia, Pachamama. Do the best for ourselves and do the best for everybody else. Yes. Yes, absolutely. I, I so agree. So I'm I just like to, you know, thank the thank you so much for being here. And I'm going to fir first thank the audience, listeners for being here. Thank you all. And I know uh, Marie, um, Marcella has a, a free gift for you, which is, you know, just all about what you know, you, you're, you're sharing her gifts is her sharing and her work that she's doing. And um, it was just it's just beautiful what you're bringing to the planet and everything you're doing it's just a life mission that you're bringing to the planet so you've yeah. dedicated your life to the planet and humanity to raise the consciousness and to ground the higher frequencies onto the planet and it's it's so powerful it's so beautiful so anyone who's listening if you have any questions or any insights please send them to us i know marcella would love to hear from you or i can pass it on to her and we'll have all her information below she does have a facebook account which you know we can send you to if you're ready, if you want to connect with her but marcella we want to thank you so much for your this amazing work that you do this and it's and it's tireless work and you know you've done it since you were very young and your amazing trust as you're saying 
your open heart and, and you're allowing all these energies to come onto our planet. And we're so grateful and we thank you so much. And you are a true alchemist of light is what I got as a name. It's just the most thank beautiful so alchemist of light. Thank you. So thank you. And I just want to say the divine human is rising and we hold unlimited potential and gifts as we create our new earth realities. And thank you again, Marcella, for owning, for, for your courage to step into owning your divine light. And those are my words, how I say we've connected to all who we are. And as we raise our heart's frequency, know that we are nourished with the love of the universe. I am Yara Atlantica Miller and soul name of Janet Miller. And I will see you all in the next episode. Thank you, Marcella. It's so wonderful. <laughs>